In this video, I'm gonna show you from start to finish how to build this exact budget AMD build that has the ability to grow with your needs. From start to finish, I'm gonna basically take things out of the box and build this entire machine right in front of you. I'm also going to be doing the cabling and make it look beautiful like it does right now. Anyway, without wasting any more time, let's get started. Starting off with the motherboard, the MSI B550A Pro, we're going to be installing the CPU. And we're going to be using the Ryzen 5 5600 processor. Be very careful when touching the CPU. All the pins are on the bottom of the CPU and you don't want to bend them. Before we can install the CPU, we need to push down on this little arm, then pull out and raise so that we can unlock the CPU socket. Over here, you're going to notice there's a little white strip right at the very corner over here, and that's going to align with the little gold notch right on the CPU. So we're going to install it. The gold notch is right over here. We're going to install it just like this. You're not going to force this down. This just goes right in easily. Just make sure you align it correctly and just drop it in place. Then once in place, wiggle it around just a little tiny bit just to make sure it's properly seated. And then lower this arm. The same way we lifted it, we'll push it out a little tiny bit and push down so that it snaps right into place with this plastic notch. Since this is a budget build, we're going to be utilizing the fan that the CPU comes with. So on the bottom of this fan, you'll notice there is a little ring right here that's thermal paste. Now we can always remove it and apply a different thermal paste, but again, to stay within budget, we're gonna go ahead and use the thermal paste that's on there already. Now you'll notice there are little pegs on this CPU. So we're going to need to remove these plastic retainer clips that are normally used for liquid cooling or higher end fans. So what we're going to do is just use a Phillips head screwdriver And I highly recommend keeping this and the screws inside of the motherboard box. That way you don't lose them. You never know when you may need them again. Now, I would love to install the fan like this with the AMD at the very top so that when you look in the window, you'll see it right there. But unfortunately, the way that they have these placed, you need to install it sideways. We're going to go ahead and install it this way. That way we stay in line with this text, just to me more aesthetically pleasing. And then we're just going to place it right over these holes. And then we'll screw these in. I recommend screwing them in vertically and I'll show you how in one second. And then also 50%, not 100% just yet. So then vertically across the CPU, right over here, we'll screw this one in also 50%. And then this being the last one, we'll do this 100% and then we'll fill in the rest. Then we're going to bring the cable across and we're going to go ahead and install it on CPU fan one We'll use these little retention mechanisms to go over this little piece of plastic here and install it just like that. And we'll make this look pretty a little bit later on. Now that we have the CPU and the fan installed, we'll go ahead and install the RAM. To install the RAM, we're going to need to open up DIMM slot A2 and DIMM slot B2. So we'll just go ahead and slide these out and we'll go ahead and anchor it right on this side and drop it in and then this side clicks in and this side is going to click in locking the ram in place now you want to make sure that you don't install the ram incorrectly notice a little notch right over here that is going to line up with a notch here if you install it incorrectly It's just going to seesaw. So to install it correctly, we'll do the same. 
now we've just installed 16 gigs of RAM. Now let's go ahead and install the M.2 SSD. On this particular board, there is a slot right here underneath the heatsink. Then there is another slot here. We're going to go ahead and install it on the main slot right up here. So we'll go ahead and remove that heatsink. By unscrewing these two screws. Then we're also going to remove this blue film over that thermal paste. And then we'll use the ADATA M.2 SSD. And then we'll go ahead and slide it right in here, making sure we lose those gold pins. In order to secure that M.2 SSD, the motherboard brings these three little screws. We're going to go ahead and use one of them. Make sure to put the rest away just in case. So we'll hold it down and then we'll screw that M.2 SSD down. Once that's screwed in place, we'll go ahead and place that heatsink right back over here and make sure you put it nicely because that thermal paste will try to stick to that M.2 already. And we'll drop the screws right in place. Now we have the M.2 installed. Now that we have the CPU, the heatsink, the RAM, and the M.2 SSD installed, let's go ahead and place the motherboard inside of the case. Inside of the case, first thing that we're going to want to do before we put the motherboard in is we want to make sure we count the number of standoffs. So there is one, two, three, four, five. This is a reverse standoff. Six, seven, eight, nine. Now there's a spot right over here for a tenth, but we're not going to be using that one because the motherboard doesn't have a spot for it. So to show you right here, there is one, two, three, four, five. This is where the reverse standoff goes. Six, this is where the 10th would go, but there isn't a hole for a 10th. Seven, eight, nine. Now it's important because let's say there was a standoff here. We didn't remove it. It would be hitting the back of the motherboard here and it could potentially cause a short now there's only one trace right over here, but if there were more, it could cause a short. So something I definitely want to bring to your attention. Now the other thing is the IO shield. Higher end boards or higher cost boards have them typically already installed on the motherboard. Older boards and more budget friendly boards have them separate. Let's go ahead and install this before we put the board in. The IO shield is going to go facing like this. The audio ports are going to be towards the bottom which is the bottom right over here of the case. And then the PS2, which we typically don't use anymore. The USB and all that stuff is going to be towards the top, especially the CMOS button right up here to clear the CMOS. Right over here, you're going to notice there's a lip. That lip is going to be pushed right through here so that it grips onto the outside of the case, for example. So this is towards the bottom of the board again. So you'll notice the audio ports here. Then we're gonna push it through. It's gonna click when these little pieces of metal sticking out snap in place. That's up there. All right, and now they're all in place. That was one of the easier IO shield installations. Another little trick with the IO shield is you want to make sure these little metal pieces don't go into the port. So sometimes we're going to have to lift them a little tiny bit. And then when we put the motherboard in place and then slide it back, we want these to be just over the little encapsulations. And we'll go over that right now. All right. So now we're dropping the board in place. And like I mentioned before, once it's down, we're going to slide it in place going over these little lips or under these little lips, I should say. And then lining up all the screw holes with their respective standoffs. 
And then one other thing is, of course, we have to make sure that all of the screw holes are perfectly lined up. That reverse standoff right over here is very important because it sticks out. It lets us know at least we have this one correct. Now we kind of just have to move the board diagonally to make sure. And then using preferably a magnetic tip screwdriver, we'll go ahead, place a screw right at the very top and we'll screw that in 100%. And now with that one screwed in, we'll go ahead and line up the board right down here, making sure this screw hole is perfectly lined. Now that that one went in perfectly, we can go ahead and fill in the rest. Now that we have the board properly installed with all the screws and everything, let's go ahead and connect all the cables for the front panel, the USB, the audio, the power button, reset, activity, LED, and all that good stuff. Along the rear of the case, we'll find the USB 3.0 port, HD audio, power for the RGB, the fan connections, the ARGB connections right up the front. And then at the very end of all the cables, we'll find the power switch. So I'm going to go ahead and connect all these first. So the USB 3.0 is going to be right along here more than likely. So I'll go ahead and slide it right in here. The HD audio is going to be right around here. So I'm going to slide it right in this grommet. And the power switch is going to be right around here. There's another grommet here. So I'm just going to slide it right in there. And we'll get back to the fan and all the ARGB stuff in a second. So actually coming around the front, we can see the USB 3.0 is actually along the bottom. So I'm gonna slide that back out through here and right along the bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and install that first. So you might notice there's a little cutout right over here, which is going to match up with the little notch right here. So we're going to slide in the excess out through here and go ahead and slide that right into place. Easily installed. Now this doesn't have the markings as to what JFP1 is, and this would be where the power reset and all that good stuff is. So we're going to have to look into the manual. On this particular case though, there is only the power switch. You'll notice in the manual, it shows that these top two are the power switch and there's no polarization. So you could plug it in this way or this way. Doesn't really matter. So I'll do it text facing up and then I'll slide the excess through here and we're done there. For HD audio, that's right over here under J Audio 1. You'll notice there's a missing port right over here. It's kind of blanked out. And then right over here, there's also a missing port. A little hard to read it, but now we'll go ahead and just slide that in. That tells us how to plug it in. All right, and just make sure you have it on all nine of the connections. It might feel like it's properly plugged in, but it may not be. So you might want to take a look into that. You want to make sure to plug in the rear fan. The cable is going to come through here. So we can plug it right over here under sys fan one or sys fan two. Then there is a extender right over here where we can plug other fans into. All right, so then we'll go ahead and plug that in right over here and we'll slide in all the access through the top over here and that extender as well. Now, depending on your board, you may or may not have ARGB ports. This board has it as rainbow two. So we'll go ahead and connect this right over here. There's three, that missing pin right over here is going to go towards the back. And the same way, especially if there's only one port, we're going to be using this right over here to plug in the front ARGB fans. So we'll slide it right at the very top over here so we can join those fans. And again, all the excess, we'll slide it right through there just to hide it to make it look prettier, but we'll make it look prettier a little bit later on. Now, since we've already used this case, we have two open slots right over here for the graphics card. And we want to make sure that we unlock the PCIe slot so that we can put the card in. So just easily push this back and you'll hear a little click as well when we slide the card in and it'll click right back up locking the card. Okay. So then we'll grab the card and then first off we'll push these two metal pieces 
right through the rear of the case right over here between the motherboard and the outside of the case there's two little notches where those two pieces of metal stick out through and now we'll go ahead and we'll make sure we'll get these gold fingers into the pcie slot and again make sure when i push it in you look right back here okay and now i'm going to push it through and that's going to lock in place it was quick but you may have noticed it and now we'll screw in the graphics card coming around the back they're a little hard to notice, but these two black metal pieces sticking out just like that, they look very similar to these right over here because that's where the PCIe slot covers are as well. Then up at the front, where we have these two fans, we'll have four cables. Two cables for fans right over here and then extensions for those fans. And then two more cables for ARGB connections for those fans and then a way to extend them as well. So we have this rear fan already connected to one. Then we have another one right over here, but we will need to continue to use that ARGB port that we use the J rainbow to connect these fans as well. So coming back over here, connect one fan into another and then we'll slide this one header right into here and we'll get back to that in one second and then we'll do the same for the ARGB connections we'll connect this fan the ARGB portion into this one like that and then we'll connect this one that's already connected into these front two fans just like that and those are connected and we'll make it look pretty in one second so then coming around we'll grab that cable and connect it right over here to sys fan 2 and then we'll put the excess back here so now we have everything in place for our computer but we need to power it so let's install the power supply we'll be using the corsair cx 750m power supply this is a semi-modular power supply semi-modular in the fact that Two of these cables are connected. You can't take them off. They're the most two important though, or the two most important, I should say. The ATX 24 pin, every build is going to need them. And the EPS 8 pin. Now your board may not have an 8 pin, but you can always split this in half and you can use one of the two, but this board does have an 8 pin. So we'll go ahead and put that back together again for the EPS 8 pin. And it brings a bag of optional cables. Because of the graphics card we have, we're going to need one of the PCIe connections. This single connection that connects to the power supply goes out to two daisy chain connection. I recommend only plug one in. Thankfully, our graphics card only has one. If we needed a second, it comes with a second. I don't recommend to use the daisy chain portion. Yes, it brings it, but I recommend to use two separate cables. For the PCIe, you'll notice right over here, the PCIe and CPU, PCIe and CPU, SATA, PATA, SATA, PATA, this is a SATA power connection, and this is a Molex power connection, also known as PADA power. We don't have any PADA devices or IDE devices, so we won't connect those. We'll connect the PCIe. So we'll connect right over here. PCIe CPU could be used interchangeably. And then we'll also need for the front panel, the top panel, if we ever were to connect a USB type C connection up there, which the connection is on the case, but it doesn't have a physical cable to go from the case to the motherboard, we'll need SATA power. And if we ever wanted to put in a 3.5 inch drive or a 2.5 inch drive, we'll connect that into SATA PADA over here and then PCIe CPU as well, right over here. So there is three, one, two, three. And then you'll notice there is a little filter right over here. And there's a filter at the bottom of the power supply. So we'll go ahead and slide in the power supply here. Just be careful with this cable. Okay, then line up the screw holes over here. And even though there is four screw holes, they only include three screws. So yeah, 
I'll go ahead and plug in the three. All right, now with the power cables, the A-pin EPS connection is going to go along the top. So I'll just stage it there for right now. We'll come back to it in one second. The ATX 24 pin is going to go along over here. So I'll slide it over here for now. The Molex will stay along the front down here where there's also a tray for a 3.5 inch drive. And then the PCIe cable will go either sideways through here or right through here. I'll go ahead and install it right along the bottom and we can make a correction later if we need to. So then here is that eight pin cable and it's going to connect to right over here. Since we don't have a whole lot of space, my hand will be in the way, sorry. And now that that's in, pull it out to make it a little nicer. And then for the ATX connection, the 24 pin will be right over here. You'll notice there's a little mechanism here to lock it in place. And that little latch is right over here on the outside. So we'll go ahead and connect it just like that. On the bottom, we'll go ahead and pull this cable through here. And now we'll connect that eight pin right over here. You'll notice on the six plus two, which when combined is eight pins, there's a little locking mechanism right over here as well. And the latch is on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and connect that right in here. You'll see that little latch right here and see that lock in place and it click. And you heard that little click that was the latch locking the cable in place as it is everything is connected everything will work it just looks hideous horrendous i'm gonna go ahead and clean everything up now and we're going to do it in fast forward because everybody's style is going to be a little different so let's go ahead and start that now Looks like we're done, so let's go ahead and do the snipping. There's a little more I forgot to make it look pretty. Some up here and down here, so one sec. In this video, I took you from start to finish with a budget build, a complete AMD build that grows with you. Right now, this will game with just about anything and we'll find out very soon on that exactly how well it does. And tomorrow or next year or something, when you need to update, this is going to update with you. I chose a 750 watt power supply for that exact same reason to grow with you on that next level. And then also a larger case, that way it doesn't look incredibly odd now, but if you wanted to, you can add a longer card. Stick with me on this. And then the AM4 platform, even though AM5 and DDR5 are out, even PCIe5 is out, AM4 keeps growing. AMD just released a brand new AM4 processor so they haven't left that platform yet so that's pretty awesome and the differences between ddr4 and 5 aren't much same goes with pcie 5.0 for the m.2 ssds we'll get great performance out of what we have already so let me know what you think down below in the comments do you think this is a nice system do you hate it totally i think it's a great system especially for the fact that it is upgradable under 720 bucks you get everything you see here this is pretty awesome then coming up on my next video, we're going to do from start to finish, BIOS flashing, installing windows, all of the drivers, and all of that
that good stuff to get you ready for some gaming and then after that we're going to be doing some gaming on it and then some upgrading as well we're going to be updating a lot of components so stay tuned for that this is iggy with this bites for you up see you guys